Hello students, welcome to the yet another MCQs discussion based on some of the scenarios which you can get from the topic of neonatal resuscitation. Right, I have tried to take some of the things which they can ask you in another way or this way. So if we consider the first question, newborn has respiratory distress after birth. On examination, the neonate has small lower jaw and cleft palate. The new needs respiratory distress will decrease by the following is right. So it is being given a small lower jaw and the cleft palate is right. So most likely this is suggestive of the Robin sequence because if you particularly see in the Robin sequence what you get is a small mandible that is the small lower jaw there is what you get is the glossop tosis that is the tongue is displaced posteriorly there is posterior displacement of the tongue is posterior displacement of tongue and there is upper airway obstruction upper airway obstruction so this is a sequence this is not a syndrome this is a sequence which you can get one after the other due to the thing cells now if you basically see here this is the normal newborn and this is the newborn with the robin sequence there is a small jaw and this tongue is basically shifted posteriorly which is causing the obstruction here so at this point there is obstruction so the simple way is either keep the child in prone position you keep the child in prone position the tongue will fall forwards and the obstruction will be relieved that is a simple thing you can do is or what you can do is you can insert the endotracheal tube through the nose particularly into the nasopharynx you are inserting the endotracheal tube in the nasopharynx and due to this tube particularly in the nasopharynx the upper airway obstruction will be relieved right and if that will be relieved child respiratory distress is going to decrease so going on to the choices which we have given placing the child in supine position no that is not going to help here endotracheal intubation you are keeping the endotracheal intubation means so called at keeping the endotracheal tube into trachea that be sometimes not difficult thing here to do is and free flow oxygen does not carry any significance so if you want that the child respiratory distress should decrease you should insert a small endotracheal tube in the noses so out of the choices being given this is the most appropriate answer here as this seems to be a case of a robin sequences moving on to the next question newborn heart rate is 40 per minute on ventilation by endotracheal tube chest is not moving next step now you might think like this that initially you start positive pressure ventilation and positive pressure ventilation basically means is the bag and mask ventilation and then you particular monitor the heart rate and if the heart rate is less than 100 per minute 100 per minute you go for the ventilation corrective steps you go for ventilation corrective steps and this ventilation corrective steps you remember by the mnemonic mr sopa right and this a here this stands for the alternative airway alternative airway so our point here is does this already has been done and we have inserted the endotracheal tube but we have inserted endotracheal tube and the chest is not moving the point is this here they are not saying that the heart rate is not improving they are saying is chest is not moving so it's a simple thing that if i am particularly putting the pressure in the endotracheal tube and that air is not reaching so what it might be there might be some secretions or some obstruction in the endotracheal tube so what i am supposed to do here is i should do this suction of the trachea read the question they are not saying that the heart rate is not improving they are saying is 
chest is not moving so this might seems particularly to be a case of the somewhere thick secretions are there is right if they had given that after giving endotracheal tube still the heart rate is not improving then you should have thought of the chest compression right so this is not the appropriate here if they would have given that the heart rate is not improving plus there is breath sounds which are decreased you could have thought of pneumothorax so that is not being given here and rule out congenital anomalies this does not carry any significance right so what we say here is the most appropriate answer here should be you need to do the suction of the trachea because they have given the point of this chest is not moving here yes then moving on to the next question in an apneic newborn positive pressure ventilation is started because you all know apnea is complete loss of respiration for more than 20 seconds or less than 20 seconds if associated with bradycardia or cyanosis and there you start is the positive pressure ventilation and after starting the positive pressure ventilation the first assessment of heart rate is 40 beats per minute and after 30 seconds it is 80 beats per minute so what i am supposed to do now after starting the positive pressure ventilation you monitor the heart rate you monitor the heart rate and you have given this and the heart rate is improving the heart rate is improving so increasing the ventilation rate to 100 per minute does not carry any significance because normal also the ventilation rate is 40 to 60 start ecg monitoring this is something also does not carry any significance now i need to choose choose between the two is now i am giving positive pressure ventilation it is not that the heart rate is not improving although this is less than 100 but this is improving right so if this is improving i need to continue the positive pressure ventilation because the indications for the chest compression are heart rate is less than 60 per minute so if the heart rate would have been less than 60 per minute i would have thought that i should shift to chest compression but the heart rate is improving here so what why to do unnecessary other steps let me continue the positive pressure ventilation and let me monitor the heart rate is right so the appropriate answer here should be the positive pressure ventilation should continue in a newborn endotracheal intubation is not completed in the recommended time limit and as such the recommended time is usually 30 seconds right that if there is an indication for endotracheal intubation ideally it should be completed in a newborn within 30 seconds is now we i am not able to do that complete so what i should do is the first choice is continue the intubation for another 30 second using free flow oxygen to support the baby start continuous positive airway pressure again start positive pressure ventilation with a mask and then try again start chest compression to increase the heart rate is right now the point here you need to remember is if we again go to our sequence in the neonatal resuscitation when you start positive pressure ventilation and the heart rate is less than 100 per minute then you go for the ventilation corrective steps and in the ventilation corrective steps you remember by mr sopa you basically remember by mr sopa where a says is the alternative airway and that alternative airway is insertion of a endotracheal tube now i was doing that endotracheal tube intubation but i am not able to do is within 30 seconds so what i should do is the best thing is stop the ventilation part again start the positive pressure ventilation and then you should try again right chest compression to increase the heart rate but chest compression is always done in a endotracheal tube intubated child is right so therefore this is not the right choice here cpap is only done in labored breathing you should you cannot continue the intubation for 60 seconds you should stop there after 30 seconds then you should basically again start the positive pressure ventilation and then you should try again so this is the most appropriate answer here out of the choices being given here so you need to again start positive pressure ventilation with a mask and then you need to try again this moving on to the last question which of the following statement is correct regarding post resuscitation care in the newborn 
babies at risk of pulmonary hypertension should routinely receive supplemental oxygen to achieve a target oxygen saturation of 100%. It is very true that risk of pulmonary hypertension can receive supplemental oxygen due to other reasons, but here there is a no target to achieve oxygen saturation of 100%, right? Because oxygen is a pulmonary vasodilator that is given, but this is not the right statement here is. Moving on to the choice number C, in severe hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, hyperthermia improves the baby's outcome? No, you are basically using is therapeutic hypothermia. You are particularly cooling the head is. So, this is particularly therapeutic hypothermia which improves the outcome not the hyperthermia is. Then in case of metabolic acidosis, sodium bicarbonate should be given routinely. There are certain points which you should remember. You, you give sodium bicarbonate but it has several potential side effects. When this will combine with acid, carbon dioxide is formed and if the baby's lungs cannot rapidly exhale the additional, the acidosis will instead worsen, right? Although it might seem that the pH may appear to improve, but sodium bicarbonate will interfere with other acid buffering symptoms and it actually worsens the acidosis inside of cells, right? So in addition, if you are giving this sodium bicarbonate, that may increase the risk of IVH in the preterm child. So basically ideal thing is in metabolic acidosis, you should rapidly correct the cause of the metabolic acidosis in the neonate, right? There is as such no indications being given that sodium bicarbonate should be used. So that means this line also does not seems to be that much correct. But this is correct, if a newborn requires admission to a neonatal intensive care unit, the parent should be encouraged to see and to touch the baby, right? That is there. If the child has become stabilized, you should always allow the parent and these all lines have taken from the neonatal resuscitation care, which is according to the American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines. I have just taken the lines from there and framed the questions for you is, right? I hope you are liking this series. Do be subscribed to this channel, be a part of this channel and I hope you are definitely going to increase your knowledge through all these things, right? Thanks for your support. Thanks.